Hey Jaco, in today's video I'll show you how to go from point A to point B with the path. We'll have an image at the end and at the beginning and this composition that we'll make we can turn it into a template that we can use in the edit page and what's more we can actually adjust the path in the edit page. Now let's get digital. So to make this happen we'll go into the media pool, right click, make a new fusion composition put this onto the timeline, select it and go into the fusion page. Now I have prepared a couple of images, I have the Da Vinci logo, my logo and a curet. So the way I will do this, I will add a background node, make this transparent and I will add a merge node in the back. Now to make the path, you have a couple of options, you could use a polygon but if you want a dotted line, you can use mask paint and we can also add a background node to this to change the color. So in the mask paint node, we'll want to select the polyline stroke. I'll make a shape or a path. Now in the stroke controls, you can use the right thumb function if you want to make an animation and you also have the spacing, the maximum by default is one, but you can type a value in and you can also change the brush control to a solid one and increase the size. And then in the background node, you can simply change the color. You can also add some glow if that is what you want. And you could also add you could also add some drop shadow. Now that is how you can make a path and how you can animate it. And let's just animate it from let's say frame 30. Right on will be zero and at frame 90, it will go all the way to the end. Now what you can then do is to connect some images to the beginning and the ending point. So I have this image, this one and this one. Now all of the images have different sizes, so you'll want to use a transfer node to be able to position them and change the size. And what I'll do now, because the merge is already taken, I'll take a new one. This will be connected like so, like so, and this will be connected like so. Now at the moment the image is in the back of the path, so if you want the image to be on top, Select the merge node and press Ctrl T to switch the yellow and the green input. Now the image is on the top. Now if you wanted to do this manually, you would simply position the image like so. But if you want the image to go along the path, that is not what you want to do. And especially if you just want to move the image and have the path follow the image. So what we have to do is go to the mask paint node. We'll right click here for shape animation and we'll publish this path, so we can use it. So what I'll do is I'll go to the transfer node, right click on the center position and select path because this is a path. And in the modifiers, we can right click and connect it to the polyline stroke one polyline value. Now this path is tiny as you can see. So just for a good measure, before this comes in, I will add the background node, also lower the alpha so it's transparent. I will merge these two, background in the back, image in the front and then connect it to this merge. So it is still the same, but if you want to do any changes, we can do so at this point. A few moments later. So what you have to do is connect the media in to the merge and we have a background node here that has the default value of the project resolution and then this is connected to a transfer node that we right click on the center, make it as a path and then right click connect to the published path which is the polyline stroke one polyline and then we can either animate the displacement but if you just want one image to be at the beginning 
the displacement value will be zero, and if you want the image to be at the end, the displacement value will be one. Now once you have this linked up, what you can do is grab the image, move it around, and the path actually moves, as you can see. And it works the same way with the displacement, except in this case, it makes a bunch of points, which is not what you want. So that is one done, let's connect the second one. So I'll just copy these two nodes, I'll be connecting this image, and let me just copy this transform, which has the path already applied, make another merge, so this can go in the back, this can go in the front, so we combine these two images and connect them like so. Although in this case, we actually don't see one of the images. So in this case, I can adjust the displacement to the end. Now this image is too big. We could go to the merge node to adjust the size. But in case you also need to adjust the size in just x or y direction, you will add the transform node so you can use the size and aspect, unlock it, so you can either scale x or y size. So now we have this connected. Now I can also move the image, but not this one, as you can see. So what I will do is I'll simply disconnect this node, make a new one, the transform on, right click on the center, path, modify, connect to, polyline stroke value, open the path to, disable the displacement, and position it all the way to the end. And now this works. So you may need to actually make multiple transfer nodes and connect them manually, not just make one and copy it. So we have this done. Maybe let's add the last image. And because now we have a lot of merge nodes, what I can do is actually use the multi-merge node, which was introduced in DaVinci Resolve 18.5. Now I'll simply connect it in reverse. So this background will go to the yellow input, yellow input, and then I have this one, and this one, and this one. And the output will go to the media out. So everything is good. I just got rid of three merge nodes, and potentially even more, if I connect now this one, connect it like so. I'll just copy this node again, just to see if it works. So I have the carrot, let's go to this node, just the displacement. Can I also move it? No, I mean, I can move it, but it doesn't affect the path. But with this image, I didn't actually want to adjust the path. I just wanted this to actually follow the displacement automatically. So in this case, I went from frame 30, so I can keyframe it, and at 60, I think it ends. It ends at 90. So it can animate along the path. And let's just change the scale a little bit and adjust the offset. Yeah, what's up, Doc? So now you have the composition and you want to make it into a template so that you can change the path and maybe also change the images in the edit page so you don't have to do it in the fusion page. Now, once you have everything done, you'll want to select the nodes that you want to adjust. The first one will be, in my case, the mask paint, which includes the path. So I'll select this one, then I'll select the images by holding control. If you want to adjust the color, this is the background node. And if you have other effects, you should also select those, in my case, glow and drop shadow. Then select all of the other nodes that you don't need to adjust anything, like so. Right click, macro and make one. Now the options that we need to enable, nothing in the mask paint. But you do need to go to the polyline stroke one, in my case, because I only made one path, and you need to enable the polyline. We won't be doing anything with it, but in the edit page, if this is enabled, you can actually make the adjustments. Then you have the media in images, you will enable the clip names. So this one is start, this one is path image, and the media in two is the ending image. You need to enable this so that you can drag an image inside the field 
and you don't have to go into the Fusion page. And at this point, you should also include the transfer nodes so you can make the adjustments by scaling them up or down. Otherwise, you'd have to enable the size option in the merge nodes. You would enable the size, but this size doesn't have the aspect ratio. So if you need to adjust the size like so, so you can adjust it individually in the X or Y direction, you should use a transfer node. And then I have the background node. This is the color. If you just want the solid color, enable these options. If you want to have a gradient, enable all of the other options that have to do with the color and also these gradients. Then we have the glow. You can select the node to see what it does. So you have the glow size, glow and blend option. In this case, I didn't adjust anything, so I'll just leave it as is. And the drop shadow. We have the shadow strength, angle, and distance. And if you want, you can also adjust the color. I think that's about it. You'll then want to go to File, Save as Group, and when you made the macro, and if you forgot to select a node, just select all of them and make the macro again. Otherwise, you'll have issues because the nodes won't be connected to the ones that you actually have them connected to. In my case, I previously forgot to select the Glow option, I wanted to fix that in the code, but I wasn't successful. And what the issue was is basically this background node connected to the media out and nothing else showed up. And now once you have everything done, you'll want to go to File, Save as Group, Fusion, Templates. If you don't have the Edit folder, make it by right clicking New Folder and give it a name, Edit with capital E. Also make these folders effects, generators, titles, and transitions, if you don't have them, and we'll put this into the titles. And I will put this as point A to B, and save it. Now you don't need to close this window. If you made some mistakes, you can go back to save it again. And if you don't see this template show up under the effects, when you type in the name of the template, you'll have to restore the Vinci Resolve, but then you can simply put it on, and see what you did. Now in my case previously, this is what it should look like, but this is what I actually got. No images, just the path. So if that is something that happens to you, you can always go back to the nodes and maybe make some adjustments, which setting you need to adjust and enable, but only if you have enabled all of the nodes. So in this case, if I see that I need to enable the glow, I can go to the glow node and enable the controls, but if you don't select the node and it is in the composition, the composition will mess up. So now let's take a look at the last composition, which is this one. We don't see the carrot. What happened to the carrot? So do you see the image? We can go to the fusion page if you have the inspector opened, or you can go to the fusion page down here. So let's double click on it. Let's see, the carrot is this image. Maybe, no, it does show up, at least it should. I messed up the blend option, as you can see. So what can you do if something like this happens to you? Well, you can fix the animation in this way. So you'd have to get the path where this is saved. My case is this, and you can open this up. So we have the blend options, but which one do I need? Well, let me go to the Fusion page, and I need Merge 3 dash 1 dash 1. So it's this one, and as you can see, this is the value that I need, 0 and 1, and I have two zeros. So this one should be 1. I will save it and put the template on again, and see if that fixes it. And yeah, that's exactly it. So now that you have the template, finally, as you can see, we have right click here for a shape animation. You don't actually want to do anything with this. You'll want to go here. This is transformed by default. But what you'll want to change this to is Fusion Overlay. This shows you the path. If you just click, you'll make a mess like this. So Control Z, 
You can hold control to select the individual point that you want to adjust and you need to hold control again to select just the point that you want to adjust. But what if you want to add additional points? As you can see, I can do that. What you can do is right click and by default click append is selected but you can select any of these modes. So in this case, we'll do insert and modify. And if this mode is selected, we don't have to use control. Now one thing that you can notice is that the curate doesn't follow the path. So what's the fix? Do you remember? Well, you can just copy the transfer node that has the path already implemented. You'll have to make it again. So I've just copied this path. So this is the transfer node. What I would actually have to do is remove this path. Let me just make a new one so we don't have any issues. So this center path modifiers connected to it, polygon line stroke value. And I think that's it. Is it? It's not. I would still have to animate it. So that is why you should do everything correctly before you make the template. So we could animate the displacement from this point to that point. And now if I go to the edit page and let's see what's all this. So this is the carrot. So as you can see now the carrot moves with the path just like it's supposed to. That's it for this video. If you found it helpful, you know what to do. I'm Simon and until next time Jackal, keep it digital.